I'm not used to going before practices, as you guys probably, we've gotten used to going all after. I don't have enough time after practice, so it's panic, so we're going to try to do it now. Um, we'll figure out what the differences are doing it before practice and see how it goes over the next four days. But that was my opening statement for once. Go ahead. <laughs> Injury report. That's uh, kind of why I stated that. Because I don't have it quite yet. Like, I really don't get that to about a half an hour before we go out there for sure. And then sometimes it changes by the time I get out there. That's why I like doing it after. So, nope. Sorry. Um, Kyle, it was stated yesterday, I think John said that, you know, once you get past the physical aspect with Jimmy, then we'll kind of see where it goes. So now that he's past the physical here, where does it go? Uh, he was in this morning doing his throwing program. Um, I don't think he's still here. Um, so he came in, did that, and um, he got out. So I'll stay in communication with Jimmy. We'll keep doing that and um, take it one day at a time. So did he ask to leave, or are you guys saying go ahead and you don't have to be here? Um, we're saying go ahead, you don't have to be here. Um, anything he wants to be at, he can. Um, but I think Jimmy, just we, like I said all yesterday, Jimmy, John, and I talked for a while. We understand every, situ every part of this situation. and. Um, I think both sides know each side's doing as good as we can. Is there a scenario where he could be on the roster week one if a trade doesn't materialize before then? No. I don't give an absolute anything. So yeah, I can, I'm sure I could come up with the scenario, but I think I said earlier that would surprise me and I still feel that way. What, what, what was the background of uh, your lunch with uh, Trey and Ayuk in, in San Diego? And are you impressed that Ayuk has seemed to kind of uh, hang around Trey for a lot of the offseason. Um, I'm impressed how Ayuk's carried himself. I mean, I thought Ayuk, I think everyone knows how it started off last year. Um, just he was a little bit behind where I wanted him. Um, and he accepted the challenge and handled it like a man and got so much better and just went to work. And I think that showed off to, I think that showed to everyone um, as the year went through. It showed to his team especially, or the quarterbacks, the way he came back for the offseason. It was, it was awesome. He was so prepared and um, one of the leaders of our team. And it continued into the offseason. You know, some guys just hang around the quarterback, so people write articles about it, and they can get brownie points. But that's not Ayuk style. So I, I, liked, I liked where he was before he left. And the fact that he was with Trey for so long makes a lot of sense because um, he seems pretty determined. And the lunch, I mean, they were just down by us working out. They went to go run some suicide hill or something, they call it. Um, Lynch did it with them. Lynched in a win. Um, and then when they were done, they came over because it was right by my house. Uh, we were just going to go out to lunch and they went in the ocean for the first time. That was fun to watch. Bond between Ayuk and Lance grown that you've seen over the last year and how can that help on the field? Um, I mean, the tighter people are at any position. I mean, the tighter your team is, is always an advantage. Um, but especially, I mean, a receiver, every position depends on everyone else. But um, when those guys can react to stuff the same and you just get, it's nice to be tight, but you also got to get those reps on the field together too. I'm sure the offense changes a little bit every year, but knowing that Trey is the starter, how much generally is this change? Are, are you, is there a Trey specific kind of lean to what you're doing now? Um, not really. I mean, there's a foundation that you got to teach everyone that, um, you know, I think that we believe in that you have to develop. You know, it's not plays. It's it's how how a tight end and a tackle can double team a D end up to an outside linebacker, how good they are at that, how good a, a guard and a center are at cutting off a shade up to the middle linebacker, how good a receiver is at beating someone, how you get – like all those plays you have to do well at. And then you try to play your your all your players' skill sets. But there's certain plays you got to get good at just to succeed in this league and to move the ball. And then what can Trey do differently than we've had? I, I do believe Trey's a threat to run at any time. Um, so knowing that he's a threat to run at any time, that – definitely changes. That gives another element that defenses have to worry about. Does it change your offense? I don't think so. I mean, if you look at, if you look at outside zone runs and then the, the bootlegs we do off of them, there's no difference than that in a threat of a quarterback running. I mean, you don't block the DN and if he chases the back and we're doing a keeper or bootleg, just like a lot of teams do, it's the same element of handing it off right away and a back taken in the quarterback running. So it's just about making 11 on 11. And when you have a threat of a, a runner, and they're not doing that, sometimes you can get free yardage. Well, John told the story about you guys were on that charter or the plane after watching Trey's pro day workout or his personal workout, and you started drawing plays. What became of those plays? Were they, did you use them last year? Did you install them? Or are you going to do it this year? Or did they disappear? No, they're, yeah, they're always there. I mean, 
some of those plays you do with quarterbacks who can't run. Um, it's, it's stuff that you can do off of what you always do. And just when you add in different guys with different skill sets, you just add another element. And I feel we have a tough offense to defend. Um, you add a different receiver with a different element. We got lots of good receivers. You had one with just a different skill set. We still have a good offense, but now we have something else someone that has to worry about. You have a different running back. You had a, a different quarterback with a different skill set. Um, there's lots of stuff you have to defend, and um, I think we put a lot of pr pressure on defenses schematically. Um, we also put a lot of pressure on defenses with our speed and how aggressive we are and how tough our players are. And then when you have to worry all about that, and all right, then we might have to tell the DN to change or stuff like this. The safeties play different because they might run the quarterback. It kind of balances it all out a little specifically what you're drawing up and showing John? All my notes are on an iPad, so they never go away. Um, so I go back to them all the time, but um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it's just plays that you do, and hey, look, at, you can do this play in pistol, and then look at the run you could do with it if they did this, and now if they stop the run here, look at the play action we could do with it, and it's, it's not like, hey, we're just saving that play for day one. It's we're saving that play when they stop that play. Uh, we don't have to go to a different, we'll just, how, what are they not accounting for? And it's just different elements that you can look into spoke to us during OTA saying how important it was that he shared his experience and his growth to the other members of the team, the younger players. How important is that to you? I think it's extremely important. Um, it's people, you got to go through experiences to learn stuff. I mean, people can tell you everything they want, but you don't really know until you go through it. And I think that was a the cool thing hearing from Brandon because his rookie season was COVID year. And so he didn't have anything in the off season. He just showed up here and that we didn't even know until about two weeks before we showed up whether we were having a season or not. So he was a little behind. And then training camp was kind of a joke for the whole league. Um, and so the season was kind of weird. And then we had so many people get hurt and he had to play a ton. Um, but that's all he knew with the NFL. So his, his experience is, man, I just kind of showed up and, and I started all year and people say I'm going to be one of the best guys next year. and. He does have that ability, and but he thought that was NFL. And the next off season, um, COVID still, we didn't have the right rules, and he didn't he didn't know he had to do anything until camp. So he just came a little behind. He's like, oh man, this camp's tougher than last year. It's like, yeah, last year wasn't camp. And then you get into the season, and it's man, this is different. And I think Brandon, instead of blaming other people and making excuses, he worked, didn't say a lot, just kept going to work. And he's a smart dude, and he is perceptive. And he learned, wow, th this is right. This is totally different man, I'm going to be ready for year three because year two was really my rookie year. And that's why he's so much far ahead right now. And sometimes sometimes guys got to get cut to learn that. And that's that's what you hope guys don't have to do. Um, but guys got to learn somewhere. You know, we've had a lot to write about and talk about from our perspective. <coughs> for you, did it feel like a uniquely crazy offseason or is it kind of par for the course in the NFL? Not really. I thought it was kind of quiet personally. I mean... I think you guys were talking about the same things over and over that, that I, I mean, we, we were, there was going to be a trade and then there was a surgery. So my brain shut off on it till they're healthy until he's healthy. I know everyone keeps, but that, that's, that was the reality of it. And then you just, so there wasn't, it wasn't that stressful. I mean, it, some of that was frustrating, but that was, that's just what you got to deal with. And I know you, people talk about in the whole Debo stuff, it's all over, but like, that's just repeated noise to me like that's that's not really the reality I mean when I when I talk to somebody that kind of counts for me and um, but not all of that's real and you try to just I think that's a lot in life but if you sit and you just read and read which I get it I can't tell I mean my number one thing I did in life growing up was listen to sports talk I mean that's all I did when I got in the car and want to fight everyone who talked bad about my dad and, and stuff like that and but now you get a job to do and you ignore that stuff and you know what's real like you don't know that when you're not in it and that's the stuff you got to focus on and if you do do that like I don't think a lot did go on this offseason totally we've been waiting for it to get to a point where something can go on but in the meantime people just they have to do their jobs and stuff but my job's not to listen to it my job Going back to, to Trey working with Ayuk, and he, he's super supportive of his teammates on social, I know you're not on social media, but he's super supportive of his teammates. What do those parts of his personality help with the transition for him really taking over this team and endearing himself to his teammates a lot more? Um, I think when, you know, when you have a kind of a veteran team who is expecting to have success this year and you got a rookie who's playing, who's coming in playing almost as a rookie quarterback because his first time starting, um, it really helps that he's a likable guy. I mean, if he wasn't, you know, that's 
makes things a lot tougher, just like it does in every aspect of life. And Trey's a very genuine, good person who he, um, he works hard. He treats people with a lot of respect. And I think the team really does appreciate that about him, um, which gives him a good start. But we get out to that practice, and um, it's about how you play. It's how you hold people accountable. It's how you hold yourself accountable. And people are going to follow the guys that they believe in who think gives them a chance to win. Um, but his personality really helps him with the team. Can you tell us what the moment was like when you told Trey it was his team both for Trey and for you? To, it's kind of a cool moment to tell him you're handing him the keys to the franchise. I really had that moment. Um, just thought it was always obvious. Um, maybe he, maybe someone tweeted him my press conference yesterday. Um, and I hope it was a good moment for him. But, but, I, but I think he's known that. He knows how I talk to him. Um, he's known that for a while. And so I don't, you know, I don't think there has been any crazy off season for him waiting to find out what's going to happen. Like it's, and I don't, we've just been waiting. We're all finding out to wait to see how it settles, but we've all known for a while that this is good Trey's team. Now that number one, is it pick up from last year or do you kind of reinforce the, the foundation, the fundamentals of what you guys do offensively? We, we reinforce the foundation of what we do offensively. I mean, that's what we did in OTAs. That's what we'll start today with day one. We'll keep that going. And, um, you watch guys, you study guys, you see what they can do, you push them as much as you can, then you pull back, and then you try to study what we're going against and see what they need to do for week one through 17 and hopefully more. You said that uh, Charlie Werner, that you're hopeful to have him some, at some point in camp. What about Jason Barrett? What's, what's the projected timeline for him? Hope to have him some time in camp. Hoping to, yes. Yeah. participating in, in all drills? Uh, he won't today. Um, I just had a good talk with Devo. I know there's, we all know there's a lot going on with Devo right now. His representation and Tori um, with Prague and John and Hamp, I mean, they're talking nonstop right now. So we'll see what happens, but it's going to, to the clock. And I just had a great conversation with Devo. So regardless of what happens now, yeah, today, I just talked to Devo actually before I came in. Um, he was going to go out there, condition on the side, make sure we'll see where he's at. Um, hopefully we can figure something out soon. Um, but we're in a good place for today. Quarterbacks study more film than other quarterbacks. Where does Trey stand on that? Um, Trey's, I mean, Trey does everything we ask him to and more. Um, there's a fine line with that stuff. Um, I mean, you don't want to ever just study just to study. Um, you want to know why you're studying, what you're getting out of it, and stuff like that. And sometimes that takes guys a while. I, mean, I, remember, I remember growing up and being in college and trying to play football, and um, my dad always told me to study film. and. I was ready to, and I'd be falling asleep about 20 minutes into it because I was just watching the corner and how to beat him or watching how cool the receiver's gloves were or try, like, what are you watching that's going to help you? And sometimes that takes playing. Sometimes that takes seeing the league to really learn that. Some quarterbacks, that helps more than others, and some can overstudy stuff to where they can't play with a clear mind in that pocket. So there's, it's different for everybody, but you, gotta, um, you always got to work, especially that position. Your and, and Chris Kosarek's thoughts on, on Drake Jackson coming out of that mini camp and what what uh, kind of challenges does, does he have to kind of overcome to be a factor? The movement we hoped for and that we saw in college, we were very excited about and saw. Um, we didn't do much team stuff and we didn't do anything physical. So now we want to see him play football and see how he can get through a training camp and if he can keep that athletic ability while continuing to get better and uh, find a way to stay healthy while he doesn't. Take one more. When, when did it become, I guess, easy for you to block out the noise? Was, was that natural, or is it something you learned over your career? Um, I'd say you don't learn it until you have to, and so I think I learned that probably in the first like three months in Washington.